Welcome to everybody who is here today, whether you're in our Zoom room and joining us, quote unquote, live, um, or as I said, on Facebook or on YouTube afterwards. It's wonderful to have you all here. If you're looking for our bulletin today, you can find that on our website at www.lafleshlimerickunited.com. And uh, as said, as always, if you are on video with us, you will see all of the bulletin, all the prayers and songs. Um, but if you're on the phone and would like to go and find it there, you can certainly do so. I'm taking some vacation. So I'm glad you're all here today. This is our last Sunday for a little while before we, uh, we will get back to it. I am going to be leaving on next Saturday, so just less than a week now, and I will be returning to Ontario for a few weeks just to visit some family and give myself a little bit of time off. Um, the MNP and the board, Ministry and Personnel Committee and the board were very gracious in saying that they think that I should not do worship or any other church related activities while I'm on vacation. So we will not be having worship on either the 16th, 23rd or 30th of August. We will be back in this format only on September 6th. So we will be online only. And we're still hoping that by September 13th, we can tentatively reopen our congregation buildings. Um, but more details will be forthcoming as we get closer to that. So um, no service, no children's church either for the next three weeks. If you're looking for something to do tomorrow night, looking to beat a little bit of the boredom that may be coming along these days, come and join us for trivia. It's seven o'clock online, same as you're on right now. You can get on on the phone or on computer and come and join us. It's 20 random trivia questions. No, no expertise necessary by any means. And uh, you can come and have some fun with us for that. We're going to continue with the Reimagining the Stories um, workshop experience. I don't know what to call it, um, but an opportunity to kind of craft our own stories in the same sort of style that we've been doing for worship the last few weeks. Um, originally, I had planned it as a two week event. One, the first week would be kind of what do we do? How do we kind of look at these stories in a new way? And the second week would be actually sharing what we've written. Uh, we'll do the first week still, and that is this Thursday uh, at 1030. But the next week, I'll be on vacation. So we'll, we'll hold off on sharing our stories. We'll give you some more time to write them. And then we'll come back together again in September. So that's at 1030 again on Zoom. Check it out on Facebook or on um, online or on the phone, same as you always do, and you can join us there. And if you are looking still to donate to the water bottle campaign that one of our local Tupperware uh, consultants is putting together, the deadline for that is tomorrow at noon. Water bottles are $6 each, and they are going to be donated to local schools so that the kids have some way of having clean water without having to be always touching the water fountains um, because I don't know about you but when I was in school uh, there was lots of kids who put their whole mouths right on the water fountains and that is not exactly sanitary at the best of times certainly not now so you can drop money off you can e-transfer it to me you can let me know and I'll come and uh, hold you up and pick and grab your money from you whatever you would like but the deadline is tomorrow at noon Wow, that's a lot of announcements this morning. Uh, the only other one that I have is, of course, our music license is license A609189 of One License LLC. All music is reproduced with permission, and Gail Mergen is going to play for us today. So we begin our worship, as we always do, by acknowledging the territory on which we worship and work, the place in which we live and love and just really enjoy our time. 
So we gather this morning here in southern Saskatchewan in the territory of Treaty 4 and the homeland of the Métis Nation, where people have gathered to share stories and songs about the world and about how the spirit has moved in our lives since the beginning of time. This is the traditional home of the Lakota, Dakota, Nakota, Soto, Cree, and Métis peoples, and it has become home to peoples of many settler nations. May we live with respect and love for one another this day and always. Our call to worship this morning, I realized I didn't, po I didn't put who it was written by. It's written by Catherine Hawker from Liturgies Outside. Come with your questions, come with your awe, for the God who broods over the chaos meets us in this place. Come with your energy, come with your weariness, for the God who breathes new life into the dust and shapes the clay meets us in this place. Come with your sadness, Come with your joy, for the God who dared to become human meets us in this place. So come, let us worship. And we light our Christ candle today, hoping that our Christ candle's flame may be a spark of God's holy fire within us. Our prayer of approach is written by Reverend Mindy on her, I love this, Revolution blog. <laughs> Let us pray together as we imagine the voices of those who would normally sit beside us, those who we may only know through these airwaves, those people that we may never have met in person, but we hear their voice in our minds. Almighty God, your spirit swept over the waters of creation. You are sweeping over us now, creating something new. Call us away from the distractions of the world to experience what you are doing now in us and through us and in our world. Open us to a new awakening a new beginning where we look through the lens of the goodness of your creation, experiencing all possibilities in you. Turn us away from the negative lens and lead us to the light. In the name of Jesus who leads us into life, we pray. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is number 301 in Voices United, if you're looking for it. Um, our, those words will be used from 301, but it will be a different tune, just so you're aware, so that it's more familiar to us.
We have two scriptures this morning. The first from Genesis 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And from the Gospel of John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So I'm wondering when the last time you looked in a mirror was. For most people, it was probably this morning as you were brushing your teeth or your hair or shaving or whatever you do in your morning routine. The next time you go to look in a mirror, I want you to take a moment. More than just, you know, what you see as you're going about your business, but really take a moment and look at the reflection. See that wonderful person looking back at you. And remember something. They are created in the image of God. That means you. You are created in the image of God. Really, you are wonderfully made with the divine spark of creativity within you. You are beautifully and wonderfully made in the image of God. Now, I want you to think of the person, the face of the person that you love the absolute most in this world. Maybe that's a hard thing to do. Maybe there's more than one person. Feel free to think about all of their faces. And remember this, they are also created in the image of God with that divine spark of creativity within them. And then think about the person that you dislike the most. Draw their face in your mind. And remember this, they also have that divine spark of creativity within them. And they are also made in the image of God. God's creativity and diversity are absolutely boundless. We do not get to draw the boundaries on what that divine spark is like. It's in each and every one of us. And for that, we give praise and thanks to our maker. Our next hymn this morning is number 305 in Voices United. It's called Into the Unshaped Silence, and it also will be played to a different tune. This one will be played to Amazing Grace. I think it's sometimes important to um, sing these new words in a familiar tune so that we're not struggling to get both the tune and the words at the same time. We can focus on what the words say. So I invite you to sing with us.
Our sermon today continues in the series of uh, videos of monologues from the characters in the stories that we read. Today we meet the Holy Spirit and all the other names she goes by as she remembers what it was to be part of creation. You'll notice in this story that the, the author, the narrator, goes back and forth between I and we. So the spirit is part of the Trinity. And so we, I, I, when I was writing it, I was really aware that there is that fluid motion back and forth between them. And so you'll notice that I wanted to let you know. The other thing you'll notice is that at the very beginning and at parts throughout, it is simply an empty screen, reminiscent of the emptiness of the world before God created. So don't start adjusting anything or thinking that your screen stopped working. It really is just supposed to be a blank screen and you'll be fine. It will come back on in a moment. I was there, even before the world was formed, when all there was, was deep, deep emptiness. I was there. And in that moment, the creative word was spoken, and through me became all life. I was there. I go by many names in your scriptures. Some call me Rock Elohim, the breath of God. Others know me as Hagia Sophia, the Holy Spirit. I am Lady Wisdom crying from the market square, and I am the spirit by which the disciples spoke in tongues. By the sun, I was called the Advocate and the Comforter. I am the spirit of God. All life is in me, and I am in all life. I remember the very first moment we spoke, we sang, the word escaped into the emptiness, and suddenly there was no longer nothing. The word we spoke was light, and that light was the most amazing thing. But so was the darkness that came with it. Our desire for one thing produced two, and in that moment I knew that we would never, could never stop creating. So next came the sky. What a wonderful idea, the sky. An atmosphere full of just the right living conditions for all the amazing things we would create oxygen and nitrogen, the tiniest of substances, but the building blocks of life. We had so many ideas, it was hard not to get ahead of ourselves. So next we gathered the waters, the lifeblood of this magnificent new world. We gathered them to each other so that there would be dry land between them. And then, oh, then we started to have even more fun. Each tree and grass, each colorful petal of every type of flower, we designed them all. Oh, I love doing that, painting the world with every hue we could imagine, sculpting the leaves in just the right way so that the raindrop hangs on the end, ruffling the grass with my breath just to hear its soft whisper. A thought, a word, the word, and life came into being. Can you imagine anything more spectacular than that? But I wasn't done. We knew there was still more to create, and so we took the light and the dark and gave them their own times and places, seasons and years. I lit the sun and made the moon begin to shine, and Oh, we knew it was good. And then animals, we made animals. Every thought we had came into being, and it was so much fun. 
Have you ever played with a baby monkey or run through the forest with the elk? I mean, the platypus and the ant, the eagle and the whale, the vulture and the swordfish and the giraffe, and each and every one brought us new delight. And then we reached down into the warmth of the earth and formed a new creature, one into which I breathed my spirit and to which we gave our creativity humanity. With infinite diversity, we created these earth beings in our own likeness, for we are infinitely diverse. With love, we created these children in our own likeness, for we are love. With imagination, we created these people in our own likeness, for we have the most infinite imagination. And we said, it is good. And then, do you know what we did next? We rested, we played, and we reveled in all that was. And we kept on creating. As new ideas came to our imagination, as new words escaped the thoughts that had created them. I have never stopped creating. You know, you humans have some funny ideas about this story. You fight over how long it took us to create. But in doing that, you miss the very wonder of the fact that we have created. You ask how long was a day, and you miss that time has no meaning when you are in love or living out your passion. You say this is fact or this is fairy tale and you miss the marvels I am trying to show you. But you are not the only ones who miss our signs. There have been many before you and there will be many after you who have not reached back when we reached out in search of relationship. And so, in the fullness of time, our word took on human flesh and walked among you. Through the sun, we knew you in a new way, sharing your sorrows and joys, delights and burdens. And though his life is over and our days of flesh are done, I still reach out in hopes that you will reach back. I still delight in the fun of creating. We still speak and imagine and breathe life into being. I was there at the beginning of time, and through me all life came into being. And I am still here. Look for me in the world around you. Feel me in the sun on your skin. See me in the help of neighbor or of stranger. Taste me when you break your bread. Smell me in the newness of grass after the rain. Hear me in the rush of the wind. Know me in your life. In a moment, I will no longer speak in this language to which you have become accustomed. But if you listen, you will hear me. I will no longer stand before you, but if you look, you will see. This telling of our story will end, but the tale will still go on. So look, listen. And know that all life is in me, and I am in all life. And if you remember nothing else, remember this always. You are my beloved child, with whom I am well pleased. You are my delight, and I love you. 
You are my delight. And I love you. That is what God says to us each and every day. And we respond by offering ourselves, our time, our talents, our treasure to God's work. Sometimes that means to the work of the church, and sometimes that means to God's work outside of the church. Within our congregations, we are grateful for the people who have continued to offer a monetary gift during this time, and we give you thanks for that. But we also know that that is not the only way in which we respond to God's grace and God's love. And so we take this time to think about how we offer ourselves all that we have and all that we are to make God's world a better place. As we take that moment, we sing our praise of God with our doxology singing, we give you but your own. Our prayers of the people this morning, the acronym comes from my mom, who many of you have now met in these last few weeks as we've been able to be on here, Kathy Shaw. And she offers us the acronym BLESS. And so these prayers are exactly that. They are the prayers of the people. I'm going to invite you to take some time after each section to Say your own prayers to God, to speak with God about whatever is on your heart and mind. So let us pray. Gracious one, we come today with the words of praise on our lips. We come with burdens and sorrow and sadness in our hearts. We come with joy that makes us want to laugh and dance and shout out for all the world to hear. Hear are our prayers, the ones we offer for ourselves, the ones we offer for our community, and the ones we offer for your world and the people and creatures in it that we do not even know. And so today we start with B, body. We pray for the health and well-being of ourselves and others. We give thanks for the life that we have been given. And we mourn the loss of those lives that have passed on this week. God, hear our prayers for the bodies of your creation. continue with L, labor. We pray for the work that people do in all the different ways and avenues that that is. We pray for those who continue to be on the front lines of this pandemic, those who are in healthcare, first responders, those who are working in retail and sanitation and hydro transportation and construction. We pray for our farmers as we come near to harvest, as we look at what that will mean in the next few weeks for them. We give thanks for their labor and their long hours that we might all be fed and cared for. God, hear our prayer for the labors of your people.
what a common letter E, oh God. And so we pray for both the emotional and the environmental in this time. For the emotional well-being of others and of ourselves. For your creation. For the beauty and the wonder. For our stewardship of it. God, hear our prayers for the emotional and the environmental concerns of your people. And we pray for the social for relationships that are good and relationships that are strained. We pray for our human family, for the vulnerable and the isolated, the hurting and the marginalized. We pray for those who feel they have no connection to one another. And we pray that we might be reminded that we are indeed connected in the very words from the very beginning of our scriptures and the create in the likeness of God we are created. God hear our prayer for our social aspects. And we pray for the spiritual. We pray with an openness to seeing something new, O oh God, to seeing you at work. We pray for those who are around this world as people of faith drawing closer to you. We pray for those who are unsure of what an idea of faith might mean. For those who are persecuted for what they believe. God, hear our prayers for the spiritual. And we continue our prayers with the words that Jesus taught us, the words that have been on the lips of our ancestors for generations and which fall from our lips now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is 380 in Voices United, and it's actually played to that tune because I don't think there's another one we can switch it to. And it is She Comes Sailing on the Wind, one of my very favorite spirit songs.
Thank you, Gail. Friends, go from this place with awe for all that God has created, seeking the source of all being in everything you do. And as you go, may you go with the blessing and love of God, who is our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. Jesus, who is our elder brother, and the Holy Spirit of life within you this day and evermore. Amen.